All right, I hope this is a rare occurrence, but this is part two of your lesson one for day one. Last two problems. As you can see, I filled these in just to save us a little bit of time. You can pause it right now and fill those in so that yours looks like mine. But let's just go ahead and dive in. So pre-calc is starting to push you around a little bit. But before you're able to do this, you need to know how to do this. Again, that's your foundational cosine function. You've seen it enough by now. We know we start by going over the origin, back down to pi, and then like this. This is our bell curve, if you want to think of it like that, or, or some gal's hair or something like that, cartoon character's hair. Um, so one step at a time. See this right here, the negative? That means we're going to take the whole thing and flip it. So it's going to look like this. Now, I'm not going to make it solid until I get to my final answer. So I've taken care of that. Now it says, and describe. What we do? Well, we reflected it over the x-axis. Now, in these previous problems, I actually did describe it because I wanted to warm you up to the language. But now they're requiring it. It says use the language, so now you got to talk the talk. All right, well, let's keep going. Let's move on to the next thing right here. What's that? That's our letter A, so A equals 2. And our amplitude is the absolute value of that letter, so it's just going to be 2. All that means is this is down 1, it's going to go down 2. This little peak right here is up 1, it's going to go up to 2. This peak to 1 is going to go up to 2. So I'm going to put a little dot there. And once again, I'm going to dot, 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 and then try to remember that the previous ones don't matter. And then we got this little guy right here, and that means B equals 2. Now, the formula, period, is 2 pi all over the absolute value of B. I'm just going to put B because I see that that's positive. So I get 2 pi over 2, which is now pi. So we got a problem. Notice this big old vase or a, a flower, if you want, like a tulip. See how this goes from negative pi all the way to pi? See, that's the normal period of 2 pi. So now we have to squeeze this in and cut it in half. So pi is going to come to pi over 2. So this outer edge is going to come into here. This outer edge is going to come into here. And then I just redraw the drawing, and here it comes. Same drawing. And there it is. So that's my final drawing right there. So what's happened? Well, it was reflected over the x. The amplitude uh, was doubled. So amplitude times 2. But then it was horizontally shrunk. There's that darn word. We can say by two, but we could also say by a half. And I know that's, you know, that gets a little crazy. But if someone might think divide by two, it's the same thing as multiplying by a half. So it's kind of open for interpretation. All right, let's move on to this final problem. So I can see that sine. So I better know how to graph sine of x. What's the trigger for sine of x? goes right through there. If you ever doubt it, use desmos.com and just check it out. And it goes up here to 1. And then it kind of co it comes back down to 0. And that does the same thing through here. So that's the sine curve. And that's one period of it. Now we're going to go step by step. What happened to the amplitude? Well, the amplitude is cut in half. So every peak comes down. Every valley comes up. And now I'm going to, this is going to be messy, you guys. I'm going to keep it solid, though, because my drawing just looks a little bit crazy. So these I'm going to keep solid. All right. Here comes the little thing that a lot of students kind of struggle with. But there's an invisible 1 right there, which means B equals 1 half. And if I plug it into the formula, 2 pi all over B, and I put a 1 half in there, that actually turns into 4 pi. Because I flip this and multiply if I ever divide by a fraction. So what I have to do now, notice I'm focusing, my last one was this little flat one. And it goes from negative pi to pi. I need to take these endpoints and stretch it. 
out to 2 pi. I'm going to add that in there. And this goes to negative 2 pi, because that's the only way I can get something to add up to a total period of 4 pi. So this drawing needs to take place on this half, and it just stretches it out. So it goes up to a half and then down. This half goes down to a half and then up, but I need to make that happen. Whoops, sorry. It's here and here. So my final drawing is this guy that I'm outlining right here. So it stretched it. Horizontal stretch by 2. Doubled it. It went from 2 pi to 4 pi. Now the amplitude was cut in half. The fancy talk is it was vertically shrunk by a half. And I should have said that over here. This one, because the amplitude was doubled, it was vertically stretched. And now we're talking all the vocab. And that's it, you guys. Six minutes into it. Uh, give it a shot, and we'll try to iron out some wrinkles when we meet in class. Looking forward to it. This is a big mountain to climb, but you're climbing it. One foot in front of the other. Just keep climbing.